Good morning and welcome to today's webcast, the business value of understanding your data. Before we begin, I'm going to play a brief housekeeping video. Welcome and thanks for joining us. We're pleased to present another in our ongoing series of continuing professional education webcasts to help companies and individuals conquer challenges as they plan for what's next. Our presentation will start in a few moments. Before we begin, here are a few things to keep in mind. You can customize how you both view our presentation and interact with the presenter. For better viewing, close all other applications and turn up your speaker volume. You can also adjust window size and placement or enter full screen mode using the controls at the top of the window or dragging the bottom right hand corner to resize. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a series of icons, each relating to a different aspect of our session. You can download the group attendance sheet and a PDF copy of today's slides from the slide deck and handouts widget to the right of the slide view. You can ask our presenter questions during the webcast by typing a question in the Q&A window below the slide view and clicking submit. We'll do our best to answer all questions during the presentation or follow up via email. If you experience technical difficulty during today's presentation, refresh your browser by hitting the F5 key. And with that, I'm pleased to introduce today's presenters from Moss Adams, Aaron Tyler, Senior Manager, and Lauren Dan Herter, Managing Director. Aaron has specialized in business intelligence and data analytics since 2016. He has extensive experience analyzing and interpreting data relative to his clients' business and industry goals. Aaron provides clients with a competitive advantage by making data solutions more accessible for their business. Lauren has provided business process and information technology consulting services since 1993. As a firm's leader of business intelligence and corporate performance management solutions, he delivers leading edge techno technology solutions for clients. His experience spans enterprise solutions, including finance, human resources, operations, customer relations, and more. And with that, Aaron, I will turn it over to you to get us started. All right, thank you, Emily. And what we're gonna take a look at today is what we think is kind of an essential problem, which is getting data out of your system. And then what do you do with that data? How do you make decisions? How do you make specifically uh, business decisions and how do you plan for data? And then what are some of the tool sets that are available uh, for you to use? And as we look at this uh, core problem, uh, we've seen this with a number of clients, and I think a lot of people can relate to this. You know, you know that there's data out there, you put data into a system, but then you're trying to pull it out, and that can be quite problematic. And in a lot of cases, there are more than one system. And so, uh, you know, getting data together can be quite a, a challenge. And we'll explore this a little bit more over the next few minutes. But I wanted to share a real quick client story about one of these uh, specific instances of the value of data and building a coherent picture of your business. And so in this case, we had a, a rural broadband pro provider. Uh, it was fairly large and they had a great uh, business. Um, they had a great ERP system. They knew a lot about it. And as we came on board, uh, we found out that they had purchased a couple of other companies uh, recently. And one of those was uh, kind of an augmentation. It was an additional uh, services company that was within uh, their main operating area. They were really familiar with them. They worked with them a lot. And they just didn't feel like that company was efficient, as efficient as it could be. And there was some angst around that. And so one of the requests was for us to build a dashboard for management to see data from this other company. And it had a completely different enterprise system. So, you know, not really uh, that uncommon. And what we found uh, in the short version, I suppose, is um, management disagreed about whether or not that company needed two more or two fewer employees. And when we dug into the data, it became very clear that there were two employees that had never run any billable hours. So for two years, uh, they had been running everything in administrative code. And uh, there's a happy ending, which is that we were able to go help them identify that. They had taken really good notes. They'd done really good work. Projects were all on budget. And we were, help we were able to help them uh, back into those times and uh, run that uh, work in progress over to billable hours and get it closed out. And everybody ended up being quite happy. Uh, the end customer got the bill they expected and the wonderful service. The services company got the money. The headquarters company 
uh, was happy that their, their business was uh, efficient and it was performing essentially as they expected it to. And this was all brought uh, through uh, the ability to get data together from different systems and show people things. And when you look at that specific system it, it, in question, it was very powerful, it was built fairly well, but the UI uh, that user layer was really difficult to use and there was no reporting feature that could have done this. So uh, we're able to sidestep that using some modern tools and we'll explore some of those as we go through today. Yeah, so thank you everybody for joining. And what, when we're talking about um, data and data analytics and getting data out of your systems, it really has this business goal of becoming a high performing organization. And what this is showing here is that high performing organizations, you know, one, they plan and then they collect a lot of data when they're performing their um, operational functions and then comparing that to <clears> plan. <throat> and then people are um, working with that information to make decisions and all of it is around communicating. So between those four items, it's data that links it together. So when we're talking about organizational alignment, like Aaron just talked about with you know two organizations, different ERP systems. What they needed was alignment across their decision makers so they could look and see and understand where can they get real business value from the data that they have and from the operations as they're uh, making decisions around what to do with that. And so, you know, one, data alignment is just super important for becoming a high performance organization. Then two, um, as you're doing that, what we have found is it's really important to just choose a few key metrics. Like don't try and boil the ocean right away. A lot of what we see in data initiatives is too much is taken on and it tends to dilute the message. And so if you take just a few key things that really matter to the business, then that will help you to quickly align and begin to find that business value in your data. Um, we often hear about dashboards. Um, I like to change the name of that a bit to instrument panel. Um, the reason for that is the, it's something where you want to at a glance, see what's happening and be able to make those small corrections, sort of like driving down the road. You don't stare at your speedometer you glance at it once in a while. You kind of know where you're at, but it just gives you that fine tuning. Think of your dashboards as instrument panels and that'll help you make decisions about what should be on it. What are the, the few key things? Uh, one term we tend to use a lot is keep the K in KPI. So keep them key. And then use an incremental approach. Again, don't have to do everything right away up front. Find something that's really valuable, put that out there, get the organization engaged. And um, speaking of engagement, there's a couple of things that are super important for um, engagement. You know, one is take the work out of it. So you need to be able to collect information in an automated way. And it, there's a lot of business value that just in terms of timing, if it takes a long time to get data together, then it'll take that much longer to get to reporting and your decision is delayed and then you lose, start to lose business value. Same thing with timely um, distribution. Once you have your data together, have an automated way that it can get out in the irrelevant time frame. Um, having data that's really current when people look at it will drive conversation. What you really want is that so-called water cooler conversation about the relevant data, because that gives the data credibility. If for some reason there's something wrong with the data, um, it'll be talked about and you can get in front of it, you can correct it. But if the data is accurate and it's current, that's going to drive business value conversations. And then effective presentation is just be able to choose things that highlight what's really important. So having this focus of data really on communication and relevance brings a lot of business value. All right. Thank you very much, Lauren. And when we look at data and data in an organization, I think one of the important things is to remember is that it's a process. You're not going to uh, instantly arrive at absolutely everything and that's okay. And so uh, what we found is it's very important in a lot of cases to think about uh, where you're at and where you wanna be. And there's lots of different ways to do that and thinking about uh, a lot of times the two year and five year horizon 
is really helpful, right? Beyond five years, business need may change dramatically, so we don't necessarily need to go that far, um, and probably have a plan for what we're doing this year already. So, you know, getting started on this is really important, and uh, there's some angst, I guess, about this in a lot of cases, uh, or maybe you know you're not where you want to be, and that's okay, um, because again, it's not going to be an instant uh, transformation. It is a fair amount of of, you know, business change to do some of these things. So it's good to get started. And we really want to look at it more from a lens of when you look back two years from now, what would you like to say you have accomplished? And, um, you know, there there's a few people we've met over the last few years that uh, they'll say, you know, yes, but our data is not very good and this has been a real problem. Um, that's okay. You know, if you start to fix that problem today, you'll have uh, a better data solution tomorrow. And that's really, you know, the, it's a building block, block approach. You should, you know, get, getting started sooner is really better. And in some cases it's, you know, good to have a third party opinion on, on where you're at and uh, what some of the options are. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. So that when we're begin to, when we begin to work with clients, um, we hear a few common themes that are out there. And so we just like to address those um, here and talk a little bit about them. So um, the one that we often hear is that it's just difficulty building a business case. You wanna get started, you know it's gonna cost money. How do you justify that with management, with the executives? And uh, the thing that I always come back to and what we hear from CFOs once we've implemented is, you need your decision makers to make one good decision a year. And that is hard dollars to the bottom line. That will pay the ROI of your system and then you have it. Then you have it to go and work with and build upon. And so to do that, again, it's a lot about being able to make decisions in the what we call the decision making window. So they're timely and you can do it when you have a chance to really make a difference. So. Again, the business case just comes down to if you had your decision makers making one additional good decision a year, um, and to quantify that, just look back in time. What was an opportunity missed? What was the cost that incurred that maybe shouldn't have been incurred? And that's your business case right there. Um, sometimes it says, you know, the, the cost is out of reach, and that can be a real concern. So it just depends on you know where you're trying to get started uh, if you already have things like data warehouses and dashboards and the like um, you can incrementally add to those or get them to a place where you're keeping quote the k and kpi but if you're getting started then technology today has changed uh, in a way and advanced in a way where a lot of the things you used to have to build from scratch are already put together so it's good to look broadly when you're looking for solutions because there's some very cost-effective solutions that put the whole package together. That means getting data, storing data, securing data, presenting data, and distributing data. So all of that can be in a cost-effective package. Um, also, we hear that you know for you know, mid-market clients, they don't have additional IT resources to really dedicate to this. And it comes back to today's technologies are solving a lot of this to take and make the systems configurable so that they're in yes. the realm that if the business person can take care of this, it doesn't have to be an IT person. And that there's huge value in having the business person there because it means that when it, something comes to mind, you can experiment with it. And if you like it, build upon it and get value. You don't have to go through this whole dev test cycle that takes a lot of it, a lot of time and, and resources. Also, um, we hear like, you know, we know we should have something data, we just don't know where to begin. Um, the short answer is Moss Adams can help with that. The answer you probably are looking for is find the key metric, like find one key metric that's really germane to your business and just focus on that. Don't try and do more than that. Collect the data for it, clean up the data for it, present the data, get people engaged on that one thing, and you'll find business value very quickly. That kind of bleeds into this next one, building organizational interest. It is, you know, if you have a whole bunch of information out there, it's interesting on the first glance, but it tends to get muddled. And so you need something that it really measures the key 
performance of your business, and that will um, pique people's interest. One other thing around that is we highly recommend doing what we call the 15-minute meeting. So every week, pull the team together and just limit it to just 15 minutes. Talk about that key metric. What is it doing? Where is it going? What is the trend? What do we do about it? And then cut out because everybody can find time for 15 minutes. If you schedule a one-hour meeting, people will start to like disengage from that. So just a little kind of logistical thing to look at. Um, but yes, there are modern tools that really help with this whole equation. And a few, thank you. A few minutes ago, um, we kind of mentioned that a lot of organizations have at least three systems. That's probably kind of understating it. And as I look at the attendee list, there's a wonderful uh, variety of people on this meeting right now, which is excellent to see. And one of the real wonderful things, I guess, about being uh, in this space and working with folks is just learning about all of the different systems and their needs. And we found, you know, really that the need, even on an almost identical business in an adjacent space with the same geography can be dramatically different. And really what I think we want to highlight here is, is that, you know, it's natural for those to be in different formats and uh, to be in different locations, even within one system. So, you know, when you do a lot of work in, um, telecom and power and we use like NISC and innovative, those are uh, different pieces exist within that system that need to be brought together and they're in different formats within that. And in each of those segments has different stakeholders. And a, a lot of cases, what we'll see in a, in a client is that people are really well focused on doing uh, the core piece of their job and they understand that piece of the data really well, but it's very difficult for them to see other pieces of data. And partially, that's because they're in different places. And in some cases, and you know, in some of the uh, different types of systems, I don't want to name any specifically, but uh, access may actually be a real big issue, whether either there isn't a license to see that uh, for every single player, or uh, because of the way the permissionings work in the system, uh, certain managers may actually be locked out of seeing certain types of data that is actually fairly germane to the way that they operate. So you know, that visibility laterally really can suffer in an organization. And that can cause, you know, kind of an amplification of, of the other problems. And um, when you look at harvesting that data, that can also cause problems. And I think we can all relate to this. A lot of us have done this, this game where we want to build a bigger picture uh, or we want to build our key metric. And so we go to the source of that item and we pull that uh, data out either as a CSV or an Excel or maybe as a report. And then we go to the next source and we do it again and we do it again. And in a lot of cases, we're in there collecting it in Excel and trying to, you know, kind of stabilize it. Are we measuring it against an employee? Are we measuring it against a time period? Um, and, you know, if you're going to do this process once or twice, it's probably okay to do it in Excel. You know, but by the time you're doing it as a practice, uh, having to build it manually kind of operates as a tax on the system for a couple of reasons. And one piece of that is just the reliability piece. You know, if you're doing a lot of this manually and you're trying to, to stabilize it against one factor manually, there's a lot of human interaction there. And, uh, and then there's just the time piece. And, and if you think about the example I made earlier, that organization may have had 150 to 200 employees uh, at certain times of the year. And if 10% of those are managers and they're spending four to six hours a week uh, creating a certain element or measure or report, I mean, that's a lot. That is a lot of human capital that's tied up in creating data before they get to analyze it. And so, you know, the advice here really is to find ways to let machines do what machines are good at, and then to find ways to let humans do what humans are good at. And really what you want to do is you want to clean up the automation piece and give people uh, excellent data so they can use their experience to make good decisions with it. And that will dramatically increase uh, their ability to be an effective player on that team. Yeah, so timely insights is another thing we find is really important to driving out business value. So there's a couple of things here, just comparing spreadsheets. So like Aaron is talking about taking the manual piece out of it where it can be automated. And that's what this slide is really about is to say, Spreadsheets, yeah, the, the speed of getting there is nothing compared to the tools. Managing the data is something where, you know, in spreadsheets, we all know how messy that can get with complex data. Put those into modern tool sets and have that go much more quickly. 
the the whole point here is that you want to have data available at your fingertips in the decision making window so data does have a shelf life meaning it's really valuable in the time where you can make a decision and change the outcome of a period once you get beyond the end of the, the month into the quarter then that period is done and you can't change those results but if you knew some information during that time and you can change what's happening in near real time that that's hard dollars to the bottom line that's real old-fashioned roi and just a little story around that um, there's a e-commerce client we've worked with and initially we're talking about some pretty fancy um, data analytics and as it, when we really dug into it, it came down to something pretty simple and that was it needed to see all the components of gross margin they needed to see you know for their sales what were their, what percentage of that was in discounts who paid for uh, the shipping and who didn't and then on the cost side, how much did the shipping actually cost them? What was the cost of things coming out of inventory? And take <clears throat> all those different components and look at them. And what they found was if they knew in real time how that was going, they could change up their policies seasonally and be able to say, we're not doing discounts in this profile or we're changing discounts in this profile or we're changing our shipping policy for these profiles. And that led to like, real hard dollars to the bottom line and basically pay for their system. But yeah, timeless is super important to have your data available in the decision making window. And part of that timeliness is using uh, some of the modern tools and there's lots of neat things out there and we've just got a few of them here on the slide and, and covered for the rest of the presentation. But thinking about uh, big BI and visualization tools like Tableau, Power BI, Click, Domo, they all function a little bit differently. They all have you know, certain strengths and weaknesses, and we use uh, a lot of these in uh, different parts of our business and also with our clients. And so you know, thinking about that BI visualization tool, it can really do a lot of neat things, um, and it will do uh, a couple of things that are really excellent for human nature, which is it'll allow you to tell a story with data. Humans like to hear things in a story format, and then it'll also show you the picture of it. So humans like to see pictures as well. You know, it's just the way we're built. And so really big strengths there that have come online. We're kind of at a wonderful place in time where there's this confluence between wonderfully powerful software and wonderfully powerful machines. You know, five, 10 years ago, it would have been really difficult to do uh, analysis on a laptop, and now it's really very possible. And then there's some other neat things out there as well around data collection that merit mentioning tools like Alteryx that can bring tons and tons of different sources together and do all sorts of pre-analysis. And don't forget about, you know, the programming level of this. If you really want to dive into some uh, R&D level stuff, you always have Python and R Studio and a bunch of other tools that really are out there for statistical modeling. And how does that all come together? Well, uh, I think if we went back in time a few years, we probably would have said that you needed a data warehouse. And really, I think what Lauren has already highlighted is the modern tools to a sense really can kind of eliminate that need because they do that job by themselves. And there is still a case in certain places for a data warehouse, um, but in a lot of cases, you know, you can take a Tableau or a Domo or a Power BI and you can plug it into many, many uh, different sources and that's going to bring you context in a couple of different ways. And one of those ways is if you own a lot of different businesses or you have a lot of different physical locations, it can bring that data together in one place. And then it also has the added benefit of giving context to the data within itself. So you can see, you know, revenue versus your revenue drivers. Uh, you can, in some cases, identify additional uh, things to that that you haven't seen before. You can see your individual employees versus uh, you know their tasks and what they're doing. And this can be really, really valuable in driving your business. And that you know really is in a lot of ways an end-to-end -end tool. And you think about you know a, a big powerful tool like Tableau can talk to about 160 data sources at a time. And so that uh, can really, really help to bridge those gaps and bring everything together. Uh, that said, uh, connecting to the data still really is the dirty, nitty gritty, difficult part of that. Um, we do see a fair amount of folks that'll tell us they've, they've gotten started, you know, they have somebody who's an analyst um, and they've run into a roadblock. And, you know, it, I would say one, it's okay to ask for help. 
Uh, two, it really is that hard in some cases. You know, these systems are very complicated, and there is a benefit to having somebody who's done it before uh, help you out. And I would say there's probably a good business case um, to engaging with somebody who's going to give you a defined deliverable on a defined timeline. You know, and what we have seen in some cases is uh, folks wanted to kind of give it to, you know, Bob in IT or Sally in accounting. And, you know, that's that's a great idea in a sense, and it probably got some things done. But if you didn't give them the appropriate time to do that, uh, it can be very difficult. You know, they have they have other things to do. It can be very difficult for them to be burdened by learning the entire, uh, you know, system structure of these different systems. So, you know, it really is. Uh, a good place to sometimes uh, look for outside help from you know different groups that have done that, and you know at the end we've talked a lot so far about uh, getting the data and the different systems and the business value of that. But in the end, communicating it is also incredibly important. This is kind of that last mile of yes, and how are you going to tell the story with the data? And so. Um, I don't know that there's any real right or wrong way to do this. We've certainly seen preferences for different styles of, of displays. Um, we've seen different dashboards or instrument panel type concepts. And I think that's really a wonderful way uh, to go about things uh, for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Uh, a couple of key things to remember, uh, the day-to-day -day work that you're doing uh, or the, you know, maybe the line managers and certain businesses, they have different needs. Than management, and they have, and management may have a different need than the board. So it's okay to have, you know, different dashboards to reflect those different levels of the organization. Uh, as Lauren mentioned earlier, keep the K and KPIs. Uh, there's a couple of, of folks that we've seen that really had uh, a ton of KPIs, and I'd say there's there's kind of two ways to look at this, right? There's go really focus on the number one thing, or the top three or maybe the top five and really focus on those. And, and hey, it is totally okay to shell those um, if they're doing well and look at something else. Uh, and then there's a different philosophy that says, you know, you can have as many measures as you want, but only focus on the ones that are not performing to spec. And we call this uh, management by exception philosophy. And there's some really large companies out there that, that really like uh, that. So think about that, but really that need for focus is what we're driving at. And as you're building these reports and dashboards and instrument panels, it's important to remember that if something is really important, there's probably lots of different ways to look at it. And you know, uh, one of the things we see a lot of is the big shift from looking at kind of a year over year methodology, particularly in finance, uh, to looking at you know, more of a performance through time. And uh, you know, just that ability to look at things and you know, four or five different ways is really powerful. Yeah, and and looking at it in different ways, um, this is kind of the, the purpose of this slide to say, you know, a number for a current period is, you know, is good because you can compare it to what you had planned or expected it to be. But every time we see a number, our clients are always saying, what is the trend? So it's just it's a couple of things together that really drive the message. So when you think of a KPI, don't think of it as just one dial or one um, metric. What it is is you can take one metric, and we'll just use a simple one like we have here on the screen, um, EBITDA. You can take that one KPI and show it over time, comparison to other organizations, trends over time. It's still one KPI, but to tell the whole story, like talk about everything on that KPI because that really informs the user and helps them to make decisions around that. And then as you're doing that, just keep agility in mind as well. <clears throat> so with agility just means that all businesses change over time. So you don't wanna have this thing to be so heavy that you can't flex and move as your business environment flexes and moves and people's needs flex and move. And the best way to stay in front of that is just this third bullet here, stay actively engaged with your information users. If you if you hear them and listen to them and really respond to their needs, um, you'll find your footing for agility and also find your footing for business value, which is all based in engagement, having people engage in the numbers and making decisions from that. All right, and in conclusion, uh, kind of a theme here is uh, start with a business win that you can 
you can get out quickly to demonstrate that value and uh, remain focused on the most important measures. And those two go really nicely hand in hand. Uh, remember to keep the machine work to the machines as long as you can and save that human time for uh, benefit analysis. And then at the end, remember that the last mile is all going to be about how effectively you can communicate that data. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Emily. All right. Thank you, Aaron and Lauren, for a great presentation today. Uh, if you submitted questions for our presenters, we'll be doing our best to follow up with you after the webcast. Um, if you would like to reach out to them directly, you may do so uh, with our contact information on the slide here. And here is a link to an online survey where you can provide feedback for today's presentation. Please take a moment to complete this survey as your feedback is very important to us. Thank you for joining us and we hope you'll join us again next time.